G'day, swingers, and welcome back. This is episode 10, part two of our Underworlds, Underworld special with uh, Mr. Graham Abbo Henry, and we're going to get back into it. Uh, welcome back, Graham. Fantastic. But um, I've got to ask you, out of all the stuff you did when you were involved in, in organised crime, what what was what was your favourite? What was your favourite? Now I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but uh, robberies go or yeah, whatever you involved, standover uh, robberies. I mean, I mean, I couldn't talk about it. Could. Absolutely, only what you can talk about. <laughs> no, for that, but, yeah, look, uh, one of the things I uh, uh, guess was the cockatoo island uh, payroll. Uh, someone over at, uh, that I knew worked at cockatoo gave me a little bit of a hint. Hint one day there was about seven hundred and eighty thousand there waiting. Jesus. And it used to be delivered uh, over at, on the other side of Woolwich. And uh, I said, "All oh, right." Anyway, one day I was just actually sitting over there, and um, uh, that was after. Sorry, uh, I was actually sitting in the park of Woolwich one morning, and I was just I had a few things to do that day, and I was going out over and in my head, and I was just having a break. And uh, so I was sitting in the park of Woolwich looking down over the wharf, out of the water. The next minute I pulled this uh, armoured van. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Then the next minute I pulled another car beside it and this massive big bloke jumped out beside it. And he was the minder, you know, and he got out of the car strapped on this massive big 45 mag. And you can see it's just a big one, the 357. And, Jesus. Into his leg, look like white earth, you know, <laughs> walked around, had a look through the bus shed, a look around the back of the shed, and uh, then give them the nod, and out they got with this big tin. Well, as they were doing it, I watched this speedboat coming in from the other side of uh, uh, the island, Cockatoo Island, heading over the Woolwich. And I thought, oh, no, well, that's coming over here. So they pulled up the wharf, they hopped on it, and uh, they all took a ride over. The other side to deliver this payroll, I went, wow, it's a fucking big tin that. So I was pretty good at guessing, yeah. you know, uh, the sort Isn't of, this uh, interesting? I actually um, went, went and saw someone that I knew worked there and I said, oh, what's the go over there, mate? Uh, what sort of money? Is it? He said, mate, I'll, I'll have a sniff around. So anyway, come back and he told me there's about 780000 there. It's fucking so I huge. So I went to the, you know, so, uh, and, and to the painters and dockers, the workers there, and the painters, and the, whoever else worked there, the shipbuilders, and that. So I said, oh, well, I'll have a little bit of a browse at that. <laughs> so I kept sitting there and having a little bit of a watch at it. Anyway, I was nearly really going to do it with Betty Smith, and uh, at the time, I was still running with another crew, but I thought, oh, I, bet I might just go out and change sides for a moment, even though I didn't really liking at the time and uh, anyway I went over and saw him and I said uh, I just had a land a good robbery over at uh, Woolwich and I said uh, do you want to be involved he said yeah he said as long as this ex-copper can be involved uh, who doesn't mind running into places I said no uh, don't involve any coppers uh, uh, yeah, no, and not on my job you know, simple as that. I'm not going to work with him. You buy them, but I don't want to. Yeah. So I said, uh, no, uh, don't leave with me. See you later. So then I, I put me own, by this time I put me own crew together anyway. They were away doing something at the time. And uh, something, I can't go into it. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, when they came back, I said, well, let's go. We need to do some homework. So come with me. So we all went down and had a little, little bit of a browse and, a couple sat out in the boat, out in the middle, pretended they were fishing, watching as it went past, seeing where it went, what office it went to. So we did a lot of homework on it. Anyway, we finally realised, uh, for a bit of a discussion there one day, we sat down and we just said, well, look, there's only one road, road out of here. Yeah. It run from Woolwich all the way to Hunters Hill. It's a long fucking road, mate. It is. And, I said, and it's a busy one too, yeah. Uh, I said, so what do you think? So everyone's having a bit of a sniff around. Oh, why not we go out to Belmain? I oh, no, 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 no. I said, no, we're going by the boat. Yep. Oh, we're going to leave here. We're going to go up the road up here. We're going to go down beyond the Bullwich Pier Hotel. We're going to park the car. We've already been down there. There's a get an old boat shed. <laughs> it looks like no one's landed for a while. We're going to put the car in there. We're going to fucking go across the other side of the boat. 
going to steal it back. And uh, <laughs> I found out it was a flight path there for helicopters. And, yeah. So I said, this is the perfect place. So I took it from there straight to Lane Cab, and within, you know, five minutes, I was, I was down on the northern beaches. So, yeah. Right. So I said, um, so I said, that's the homework we'll do. So I walked a bit for months, and I was, I was just down there. I just left there that day. I was actually waiting for the, for the uh, truck to come down. And I was, I was cruising around the area, and I next minute I was seeing Ned go past yeah. with his new partner. Right? And uh, this was uh, one of these little scumbags that tried to kill me on this, you know, make himself a big shot. So uh, as, he, as he come past, I went, oh, they're going down to have a fucking breath at this. So I went down and sat off them. I'm in a big Rolls Royce, I'm only stuck out like that. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got a pack of fucking rabbits. Yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, I went back straight back to my office and we come next Thursday. Yeah. So simple as that. There's no looking because he's going to sit off the tap, but otherwise, you know, it's going on. I should have never shown you. So uh, anyway, the final Thursday, yeah, we got there and uh, uh, we, we decided that we'd paint the wharf. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just pretend we were the council workers. Well, at the same time, the council truck pulled up. <laughs> just sitting in there having their lunch. And this, They're only down the road. And yeah. We are out on the wharf. My, my boys were out there uh, painting the wharf and going along and we've all got wigs on, of course, and different uh, outfits. <laughs> and uh, next minute, you know, because if you take up the battle cloud on it from the wrong on the truck, well, it just goes wrong. Bit you obvious, know, so yeah. You've got, you've got to do it smart, so. So we turned up that way and, uh, <laughs> and uh, next minute, our judge, Mr. White Earp, you know, straps on the big gun and does a big scroll around and everyone's just working away painting. Anyway, I'm parked in the bus zone and the police come down the fucking hill. Uh, so they're only blue really uniform, they come down the road and they said, uh, who owns the, who owns the uh, UP? I do, mate, I do. Yeah. I started to speak along with the town. And I said, uh, I, I just drove off the plank and a couple of brushes. I, I, I piss off. He said, there was a bus that comes in here all the time. I fuck off for a walk out. <laughs> and they go around the circle, piss off. So I run up to the nearest phone box and put in an emergency phone call. We're waiting at first and usually at the corner of Prince Henry Street. <laughs> Rachel, <laughs> Victoria Rachel said, mate, I've been involved in a really bad accident here. I think I've killed someone. And so naturally I knew all the, the local coppers would be called and yeah. off they go. So I got out of the area. Right? So I got back there as I just got back down the, down the road they come and pull up. Anyway, within seconds they go out, they, the big bloke looks around, has a look around, he gives them the nod. As they got out of the back, bang, we hit them, you know, <laughs> chop the paint brushes and bang, gone. You know, of course they all had plastic gloves on and, you know, and everything we got, as soon as we lose the site, all go into one bag, bang, go to get burned. And they shit themselves. So they bang, someone had a job to do that, someone had a job to get rid of the gun. Yeah. You know, and that, that's how we operated. So... Heaps of reconnaissance, plan it out, and oh, again, mate, smart, you've got to use you've your smarts. Yeah. You've got to come up with a smart way. You can't give them a chance. Be a, a, a lot of, I learned all the tricks, right, but they're not even allowed to unbutton their uh, gun holster. Yeah. Right? Unless they're uh, under threat. They can't. Yeah. But once they chub, they used to walk around, they used to carry shotguns, everyone started complaining. Yeah, right? yeah. So that made them a little bit awkward to sneak upon. Yeah. We've got to pull up with a double fire on the call. Of which we it wasn't there to go. Yeah. So we were just smart, you know what I mean? So anyway, we, we hit this place and, um, and uh, we, you know, within a few seconds it was all over and done with and Wilder lost his gun and everyone had lost their guns. And, Did he shoot himself, uh, uh, Graham Wilder? Uh, no, mate, look, we, we do it that quick, mate. Uh, mate no, in everything I've ever done, yep. every robbery I've ever done, I've never harmed a soul. Yeah. I mean, one bloke, one day, went to go for the gun, and I said, mate, all I want is that fucking bag, mate. Yeah. Don't you dare do that yourself, mate. Yeah. Right. Don't be stupid. Go down the ground, wake up, we sort of bang, we yep. took it. Sometimes I had to kick up their leg because there was a couple of laps and carry a gun down the bottom. A little bit, yeah. So I always had to double check. Yeah. So didn't want to be going away the next week to cop one because yeah. the rumour was in the air to them. Yep. If you got fatally shot, yeah. you were gone. We were going to put you off anyway. Yeah, yeah. And that, that was a real one. Like we, we carried kits in our car. We thought it was gone straight through. 
we'd carry a tent, yep. we'd lock you up, we'd get you to somewhere where we knew was safe for a doctor that we had sweet. Get you fixed up. up. Yeah, so, right. You know, that's what I did when I've been shot. I've got a little sneaky doctor that I have. We did that. Dr. Powell, I said, no, Yeah. So, uh, Nick Powell, I did about 15 years for importation, but <laughs> you know, he was a bit scully around good luck. So, uh, you know, we used to use him for stuff. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so we were away and gone. I'm not parked the car in the boat yet. I didn't find that car for two years. Fuck it out. I bought the house or something, and so, oh, I'm a lot of it, a boat shed. Two and years. I'll carry it. You know what? So, they didn't know what they were going on. But um, anyway, so, but the, the silly guard, he, he made up some story and said, I chased it trying to be a hero, you know, and cover his own ass. It must be interesting. So I chased him over the glaze on bridge. And I said, oh, I don't know who the fuck he was chasing, mate. He chased the wrong bloke. We were, we were on the wrong bridge. Mate. And he's been a marathon too to the Gladesville fucking bridge yeah. from there. Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, so we just got their little boat that we'd stolen and uh, we hit it at this certain location for a few weeks until the day and dropped it in the water, part, took it around there and it. <laughs> And then, as soon as we finished, we just put a foot on the throttle or a stick onto the throttle, yeah. and on the steering wheel, and kept it going. It just went off the <laughs> yeah, it went off down the river, I yeah. Don't know where it went. <laughs> and, uh, you know, well, where it ended up, could smash it in the boat, but I don't have got no idea. But uh, anyway, we just took off and uh, one went and, uh, and counted the bugs for the day. And, and uh, when, when we got on the piss, as we did, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I believe uh, Mitty Smith blew up in the pub at uh, the three weeks of Brazil when he saw it come out of the news. Yeah. And he screamed out, you fucking swine, how bad that was mine. Oh. Huh? After and you had already, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Well, that's a left hand drop. You know, yeah. So we could have given you up. Yeah. So, you know, I'm a, you know, I still feel like, you know, so a pig's ass. Yeah. 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 And he's flying over him, you know. Yeah. So, a little bit of a speak on him and was going to uh, put him down because they'd had a few cracks at me trying, you know, I hadn't worked it out. I thought it was another gang because there was a bit of a gang war going on and, and I started off in the 84s, you know, and uh, someone tried to kill him there and we shot one of them and then, yeah. you know, went back and forth. But, you know, look, in the whole 10 years I knocked around with that bloke. Yeah. He never shot a soul and yet he's done all his time for all these His reputation is huge. Harvey Jones, of which he never killed him. Of course he was always behind the scenes. Yeah. Right? Uh, he wanted him to go. He didn't only ask the police to get rid of him because he was a pest. Yeah. And, uh, and he ordered it. But he never, ever, ever shot anyone in all that time I was with him, mate. Right? Right? Yeah. And people... That I know of, that uh, when I was, I was actually in the can in 1983, I got shot by the police in uh, Mount Street, North Sydney. Ah, I know that. 1981, yeah. sorry, it was 12th of June 1981, I was shot in the street in Mount Street. And uh, in the head, the uh, pellets went all through the top of my head. I still got one lodged in this eye, even they won't take it out. Uh, too too uh, risky. Yeah. And uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, so I ended up doing some business. And uh, I got pinched with a uh, pound of heroin in the car, which was big news in those days, you know. Yeah. And um, and uh, they made a big thing of it, but what, the, the cops snuck down on the side of the car and that awareness in me went, there's something wrong here, because I'd seen the bike take off that yeah. I was doing the business with. So that kicked in again. Yeah. yeah so many times, and yeah. I was scary, something was not right. And I just turned around. The next one, the shotgun hit the window like that, and I put my hand on my face, and I went back like that with my hands like this, you know? Yeah. Well, one of the pellets went through and whacked in my eye, and split or when it hit the window. Jesus. Put the glass in my face and shit, and pellets in the air. Yeah. But Jesus. The, 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 the gun blast went straight through the other side of the car. So they were to take me out of. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. of course they said I pulled out a gun and aimed at that. Well, I did have a gun on me, but it was in the console. The whole time, right? yeah. And I went on So next one, they dragged me out. It's lunchtime at North Sydney and Mount Street. They dragged me out the street and here's, here's, me, here's a gun laying underneath me. Yeah. So they stuck it under my guts. You know, they, they planted me with one. Yeah. And... Uh, and then I realised I already had one as well. Yeah. What had happened, the reason I was shot was a couple of days prior to me doing the deal, this bloke was actually another camera bloke, and I was a little bit desperate for money. 
and uh, I'd, had, I'd just done a nine-month stint for uh, having a gun, and yep. the coppers were last on the deal. So I ended up doing the nine months. I said, stick it up the arse, you know, yeah. and didn't pay them. Yeah, I said, you stick it up. Yeah. So uh, I, I did the time. When I got out and I said, no, I need some fucking, get some quick money here. So that's why I did that deal that day. Yeah. And I also had a, a neat time jag at the time getting a brand new motor put in it, yeah. which was worth 6000 to fix. Yes. Right, so I was getting about uh, you know, 90000 I think, at the time for this, which was a pretty cheap sell, yeah. you know, because they could earn, say, 120 on it, like just passing it on. Yeah. So you always gave someone a bit of a margin in those days. You know, you don't get margins today, I believe. Yeah. No, not that I'm involved in that. But, yeah. You know, <laughs> but, uh, but they're the rules, you know. You know there's hardly any margin. You just get bang and yeah. you know, you could have chopped it up or something to, to earn a good out. But, um, different ball game, isn't that's it, a, today? That's yeah. different life, mate. You know, and yeah, all the, middle, the middle man's gone, you know, and mate, having a little middle man running around. So you've just got to learn it. And then to pass it on, you know, it's just a commodity to the underworld, mate. It's nothing, you know, and that. Yeah. And um, that's all of this. And uh, anyone who takes it, it's their own choice. But yeah. um, at, at the end of the day, um, when, when I got shot, I went to the prison, and uh, an expert of the mate of mine came out and see me. I said, Can you go down and see old Paddles Anderson, who used to be really the Mr. Big of Sydney before Lenny McPherson? But, and he had all the power with the politicians, the judges, uh, he had yeah. Premier Raskin on side, you know. Oh, yeah. So Paddles was the next Melbourne gangster, you know, he shot killed a few people, but he was the smart as a whip, he was a real good bloke, and he did it for nothing. Yep. Right, so I went and my mates went and seen him, he got me in front of the right fucking person, and I got a seven year sentence. With two years on the bottom for a pound of marrow and shoot or void up ranching, which the judge said I don't believe happened, that I didn't pull out a gun and let go of the police or even put a gun. Oh, it did sit, yeah. It would. So I was the first bloke in New South Wales, man, a bloke called Pat Hutt, to have a lie detector test in the prison system. And uh, we passed on with flying colours. Yeah. So I produced it in court, and the judge said, Look, I've already read that, but that's in the miscible here, you can't use it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it went up in America. Yep. So uh, that, that's the way it is. So anyway, he gave me seven years with two and a half or something like that. Yep. And then I, another bloke, the same crew come to see me and I said, yeah, listen, I have a little rumour going around out there that Rex Jackson's um, taking a little bit of money. Oh, yeah. Right? And he said, uh, yeah, Rex doesn't want to quit. And I said, well, I'm funny. I want to get out on licence. He's the corrective services minister. Yeah. So I said, oh, I believe I've got sent on my papers not to be released on parole. Right? <laughs> so that means I'll have to do at least five years with remissions. Yeah. You know, seven instead of two and a half, right? So I said, so I wrote this thing about my wife, which was true anyway. And I said, my wife got demetriosis, and in the metriosis of the yeah, fallopian tubes, and, you know, which stopped that. Uh, or pregnant, you know, can turn cancerous, it's pretty dangerous. And, uh, I, you know, I need to be out with her and uh, things are stressful. And anyway, I was released. So, you know, I ended up doing about 20, 20 months or so, 22 oh, months. Right? So, naturally, they blew it up in the paper and how did this swine get out and how did this bloke get out? Then I was still getting blokes out. Yeah. Going around collecting money for them because they... Uh, he then started getting these blokes working for him, Rex Jackson, and the blokes were charged and say, say it was cost, and Rex was saying, yeah, 15 grand for me, well, they put 45 on them. Yeah, yeah. Right, so they keep the rest, so they're giving the Rex a little bone. Yeah, yeah. You know, or a few degree, and they're keeping the rest themselves. Anyway, they started lashing on people, they were saying, yeah, you're going home yeah. next week, and then they wouldn't go home. So yeah. I'd go out and help them. I'd go and collect them. Go and see that his bloke's punched the crap out of him. You know what I mean? Just take the money, just say, make sure he gets out or give us the money. Yeah. Well, simple as that. So I got the money back and, and uh, ah. things like that from him, you know. Some of these blokes ended up being yeah. on the opposite team against me and turned on me. So that's the life. Look, it's that's dog, the life d- dog eat dog sort of, that's yeah. That's the life I chose. It's full of treacherous snakes. Yep, yep. And dogs. Yep. You know, real good blokes. Yep. And... Yeah, mixed bag. Yeah, There'd be a lot of, bag, a lot of good so, ones there. Uh, that awareness is, 
the, the best thing we ever had. The same way oh, I've been dead 20 times. So, absolutely. You know, I must have pissed the other people off, especially their pocket money, because, yeah. you know, they were paying other people to get rid of me yeah. while I'd go away on holidays up the coast. Yeah, so they're right off the seat, yeah. I don't know when I'd go away on a holiday, someone would tell me. Yep. You know, what I mean? So I knew they'd be hit on me. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, while the cat's away to my supply, so that was the rules. So they must have been thinking, shit, got away again. Fucking turn up and try and fucking get rid of me, you know what I mean? Or I'd see him coming at me. One day I seen a bloke come straight at me. I knew who he was. And he come at me and he had put, put his hand around me back and grabbed the gun. Yeah. And I just had a bum bag along the front. Yeah. But I was carried on. I just threw my hand straight in it because, first off, I didn't want to know if the jacks were there. Or I didn't know so yeah. I knew the jacks were on side with this bloke. No, yeah. police. Yeah, right. So I thought I've got to be very careful here, mate, because this bloke's an informer for the Crime Commission. And mm. right, yeah. This Mark Stan, right, who ended up going to jail getting 16 years for pseudo weaponry. Yeah, right. right I've the heard. Gun, yeah. And wanted me out of the way, wanted Nickel Hurley out of the way, and, uh, and, uh, and we're going to kill another mate of mine because he was long with me. Yeah. Right, so they, they wanted me bad. Uh, they, were, they were willing to do anything. So anyway, so they kept, so I had to be careful. So I just, instead of pulling out the gun and going at him, I just shot my head in the bag and just went straight at him, you know? Yep. You know, with the, with the look, come on, I'm all fucking pull it out. Yeah. I was all wanting him to pull it out, maybe in the park he was going to lay. Yeah. You know? And he didn't. He turned around and fucking he shit. did the high tail. Yeah. Three weeks later, they found him in Melbourne. He stabbed himself to death with a knife. Fuck yeah, yeah, no. And his old man was a fucking police dog years ago, one of the tow car gang that used to chop the toes off. I've heard, in yeah. In the Iron pub that met in Smith and myself home for a while. Fuck and, yeah, uh, no. I used to get them down to the cell there and give them a little bit of a torture. And, yeah. You know, we've done a few things St- here ourselves over the years. But... Stab himself to death. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, yeah. He was so always a kite, oh, yeah. probably. Yeah. And he not was different. Yeah. So, you know, he'd been pissed off he couldn't get me or didn't get paid or, oh, fuck, Fucking anyway, hell. So. A bottle of scotch and a packet of Panadol would have been a, a better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking stab yeah. yourself to death. I mean, look, they see that many people in me. They're a big ethnic gang. I won't say who they were because, uh, you know, I'll stick loyal, mate. I always have. Yep. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, everything's past the course, but what they didn't realise was at the time. And I hope they have by now that, uh, that, you know, the bloke was a crime commission informer, still is, yeah. still operates today. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and so, really, in the end, they, they started to walk into pubs. This is how desperate they were, because they knew I was going to have a go at the bloke, and he knew I was going to have a go at him. Yeah. So, he was saved a couple of times by a couple of little incidents that happened, and, uh, and also had a few times by that awareness that I had. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but uh, I was just going to say something that just slipped in mind. I was heading towards something there. Um, I was going to say, uh, I just can't think now. But oh, that's all right, mate. On, on, on one of the parts there where he was going to get me, it was near Concord Hospital. I was living in Hospital Road near Concord Hospital. And there's a big... Big old um, rat house part of it where, right, and, well, where the junkies get in the rehab place. Yep. And it goes for miles like a track around there, around this other old house. And then there's big horse paddocks where they keep anyone who knows that area will know what I'm talking about. The hospital sits in the middle of the grounds. So I used to walk with me a little dog, Oscar, a little Jack Russell every morning. The jacket. And, we go, and I deliberately walk because I'd know they were going to come out at me. Okay. Right, so I deliberately do it because what I wanted to do, I never wanted to go to their area and be caught in their area. Yep. I wanted them to come to me because I knew they'd come from Rave Coogee Way. Yeah. Right? Yep. I wanted them to come to my place in Concord and if there was a gun fight, there was a gun fight. Yeah. If they were dead, I proved that they came to see me. I didn't go to see them. Yeah. And I right. Like, yeah. So I deliberately did the walk around this track. And as I did, one day I just changed my mind. I said, I'll go over to Glazewell and see Stan Smith, who was Stan the Man Smith, one of the old McPherson gang, and probably the most willingest gangster in Sydney in his day. Yes. And uh, I thought, I'll walk over to Glazewell and see him. 
So I walked across the Rye Bridge, and as I walked across the Rye Bridge, I looked up to the right where I used to walk of the morning around those tracks. And I could see this bloke just sit there in the kayak. And it's just amazing how this awareness works in me, right? Snapped in again. And, yeah. I, and I went, that's something he'd do that, bloke. He's pretty clever. I've got to give him that. Clever little parson. And he was just sitting there. So I, I took notice that he didn't have a fishing rod. Yeah. And he was just sitting there watching the track. Oh, and he had this hat on with a flap on the back like the Japs that were in the jungle. Yeah. And they were, they were fighting in Thailand and that. Yeah. Yeah, Philippines and that. And uh, so that stayed in my mind. So I, I walked around there. Well, I said, Stan, I've had to see him without come back. A few days later, I was walking along that track and a bloke passed me. And I thought, that's one of that bloke's cousins. So I stopped and waited for him to look around. And he looked around and I went, Come on. Yeah. You want to do something, buddy? Yeah. Anyway, I've seen him get on the blower. So I just kept walking. As I just got around the corner, there was this real big, thick bamboo right, right near the water of this. And I saw this kayak stuck up in the tree. Yeah, fucking right, hell. Yeah. The and then straight along was this big, thick bamboo that was like this and about 30 foot high. I could see the flap of this hat. Yeah, bastard. So yeah. I thought, good, I'll get up behind him. Yeah. So instead of going left where I was going to go, yeah. right, he would have come out on me and gone bang, I would have been gone. I went up behind him. So as I went up behind him, he jerry and then took off and, yeah. bang, and I said, look out for the dog, Oscar. I yeah, said, yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 he said, come on, you dog. Well, next to the nut pulled the blue van, the Mercedes blue van, black tinted windows. <laughs> that was his mates. I mean, what the fuck's happened, you know? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Bastard, you know? So, what oh, the fuck am I? I already knew that's where I was going to get hit because I've seen the ethnic crew there. Fuck it out. So I said, let's just put it off. So we put that area off, yeah. around there, got them like that. Dead set. Yeah. Got him talking, got him bucking, anyway, off they go. Yeah. He goes back, gets back to his car on the other back inside. Yeah. And I went, got these motherfuckers, they yeah. bad boy. Yeah. The police turned on, because the police were coming into the pub. Now, I used to smoke in those days. I was yep. about 50 at the time, I'm 70 now. Yeah. So, when I was in, in the pub, I'd be able to smoke. I'd be watching the door. And then, I just saw this bloke walk in one day, and I thought, He's messing up the table, he's just coming straight towards mine. And he just grabbed the ashtray with a plastic bag and put the thing in like, and dressed like a bar, useful, you know, the white shirt, black pants. Yeah. Put it into an ashtray and see if it walk straight out the front door. Uh, bastard, yeah. So I, 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 I got in touch with, um, uh, I think it was Steve Gibbs from the, uh, uh, one of the crime reporters, and I said, These, the cops are picking up all the uh, cigarette butts, made, yeah. made a big... Big blow about it. Harassment. Uh, the Harassment. Yeah. And uh, that got a lot of people out of trouble because that's what the cops were doing. They were running around putting using them that as their, as their backstop. So that when all the fabrication stopped after the Royal Commission, yeah. they had to find a way to still stitch people up. Yeah. And yeah. That, was their, that was their in the DNA. It was either get it and squirt it around their area, yeah. steal all the aisles, you know, with a couple of times. Yeah. Or they were using them cigarette butts, getting your cigarette butts. And I thought, yeah. Because you got your so DNA on that, I that yeah. Up, so I couldn't get me. Because if he was found dead, yeah. which was going to happen to him if I'm an old one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was going no, 100%. Shit. And, uh, and rightly so. And, um, oh, bastards. And the, um, that's what they would have done, just put the cigarette butt there, and that would have been some evidence to hold me at least on bail till I could see if I could prove myself innocent or. But they're pretty obvious, aren't they? I mean, obviously, oh, you know, you've got the street smarts and, and, and you've got that sense but, as well. But I was always on the ball that way. You know? Yeah. I mean, uh, otherwise, I'd just be, you know, I'd be mother statistics of the underworld and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and uh, found out the sand dunes along. Yeah. 
in Botany. Longer drive in Yeah. Drive. But it's 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 so unbelievable. I even say that to my girlfriend's uh, son. You just look around, be aware of your surroundings yeah, yeah. in life. No one no one gives a fuck these because everyone's like okay. this, and everyone's well, doing something. Out of your car that's yeah. Cool. You know, I'll watch everywhere I go. Common Very sense, yeah. We used to say common dog fuck and yeah. common sense, yeah. just yeah. common sense. Have a squeeze around if it's new. Um, why is there a bunch of these steroided pricks standing on the corner staring at me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. especially when I moved up the coast and they turned up next to me, they'll say, at least from the eastern suburbs, I can tell by the way he dresses. Yeah, yeah. And I just look at them and they're staring at me until I just keep staring at them and then they just go. Yeah. You know, it's how well you're right, I can see, yeah. You're the way you dresses or, or, or your movements or, yeah, yeah. Or gear or fucking hero tools or, yeah. whatever they were on, because, you know, like, in our day, none of our gang ever touched her a drug. Yeah, you touched drugs in our gang, but never took her own poison. And if you did, you know. It'd be smart. They're smart, you know, in that situation. As I say, like, in regards to that med, I was just telling you before off the break, um, you know, people used to say to me, how come you got around with him for 10 years, Nerdy Smith, when when he had about four attempts on my life? Well, because first off, I didn't know it was them. I thought it was from another gang when it was first happening. The only thing that alerted to me one night was when I got shot in the leg at a restaurant. And uh, while I jumped out of the bottom of their car, they missed me. And uh, as they reversed back, I jumped over the bottom of the car and jumped on the roof of the... Yeah. They come out of the back of the window and let go with this. Yeah. Um, and I thought that looks like the rubies we had because we used to get those rubies and paint them black. Yeah, really. And machine them down so they yeah. could like a machine gun. Yeah, shit. So they were just a twenty two, but... But, but, but they were a good, they were a good, we good rifle, rifle. yeah. I did it smashed off me, uh, off me bone in my leg. And it come up as black as a smoke. Jesus. And uh, then I got down to old Dr. Nick and seen him and yeah. fixed me up some powders and cleaned me up and uh, I was sweet. But you go into shock, I suppose, at first. Well, Your body not, goes into a form of shock, so you're sort of like, oh, shit, yeah. but I'll sort yeah, that I out. I didn't even think about it until, until yeah. after I got the car and I thought, Jesus Christ, that's it. That you was know? close. And, yeah. Um, but I didn't even really know it had been hit. I just knew they were coming up the wall at me. Because the adrenaline was so pumped up in me. And I got through the break and I always liked getting through the break. That always gave me a high, you know. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I got going that night. And it, as I say, it was killing me by the time I got to this place and got it fixed. And I stayed there all night until the next day. Then I went in front of them. I went around in front of them. I said, funny thing happened to me yesterday. I told them. And shout out the wounds, and no one put up their hand to say, Oh, well, let's go and fucking sniff around. Yeah. I, mean, I thought, well, What's the funny fucking gang? They sort of saying, Isn't that terrible? Rock, yeah. you know? And then some money went missing in the safe that belonged to me, and then I ended up putting the gun in the, in the bloke, the publican's uh, head, and I said, Where's the money in the safe, mate? That was my money. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, oh, I'd been coming. Got a bloke brought down a note yesterday, mate. He wrote me up and then he told me I was coming to pick it up. Gave me a note, leave that. And he gave me the money. Uh, I said, right, enough of him. Yeah. So I went up and went up to front him up, up in the unit. And when I got up into the unit, this is after I'd been shot. Jesus. And that was probably a few weeks later. I got up into the unit and, then, and instead of walking in the front door where I'd usually walk into Pitt Street, Redfern, I went, no, I'll go underneath. I went underneath, it was pitch black under there. As I was walking underneath, I saw a couple of black scars. Yeah. One was a U. Mm-hmm. And I said, 100 to 1, I'm going, and then that, I'll be on four short drive tonight. Okay. Right, that's where I'll be. So I was tooled up by a big 45 down the back of me, a 9 bill. I had a 9 bill automatic down the back of me pants. I walked straight up and I said, they started in the up here, bang. Well, I'm just going to fucking give it up. Yeah. So I uh, got up into the fucking flat. As though I knocked on the door, his girlfriend opened the door and, and went like that with her eyes. Give me a heads up. Morning. So as I opened up, she was a tribute to you, you know. As I opened up the, the door, it was Cathy Flannery, 
Chris Flannery, he was the hired gun from Melbourne, they used to call ridicule. And he had his hand sitting with sort of a pillow, but like a you know, common sense told me straight away that's where the gun is. Yeah. So I just stood there, and the next minute, Ned and two of the other guys from my team uh. said, I've got to go somewhere, and he took off out the door. Oh, and yeah. He said he was never the shooter. Yeah. Always, always be on the scene. How convenient. So yeah. Out he went out the door, out went the rest of the team. The team I put together. I did that for a while when I first put him in the team. Look at Another life sentence, and I put him in the game. Anyway, uh, they all went, and uh, it's just me and him and Michelle and his girlfriend. So I walked out in the kitchen just to sort of get away. She's still going like that with her eyes. I said, Can I have a cup of tea? She said, Well, I'm going. And I knew she'd never leave anyone in there, right? Yeah. Because she was real fastidious and flat. And I said, uh, Oh, that's right. I wanted to put on the hot water, so I put on the hot water. And I just, just went around and made sure that he couldn't be safe. He was off. And I just walked back out. And as I walked and I started to talk, I got near him and had big mirrors. All them square mirrors, remember them? Yeah, yeah. They know everybody had them. They're on the walls and, yeah. We're up on the roof of these bedrooms. <laughs> and I so as I walked in, I said, um, Oh, where did he go? Where did the big fella go? I see he just pissed off. He said, oh, I fucking want that. Well, he pulled his hand away from the pillow. Yeah. As soon as he pulled his hand away, I fucking You're on it. Him. Yeah. But pushed that straight out of the lake. Oh, and I see the silence are on the other. Again, more just broke his mouth. Fuck. <laughs> Leaned over and then pulled his over. And that was the one he was going with, the one with the silence are on. Well, as I had him, I had it in his mouth. Next minute, the door opened it. Yeah. Well, naturally, I think it's then coming back. I spun the gun around like that. And I got this one on him here and this one on him here. And just, uh, just got crack, crack. Yeah. And then finished the long. Yeah. Know, I had no choice. Yeah. yeah. As the door opened, it was a woman. And it was, she'd come up there to see Michelle and she was a friend of hers. Ah, right, and, yeah. Uh, she was a barmaid from the north. And I said, no, I can't. You can't, no. I can't do anything. Yeah. So I just walked out and I said, you're the day, mate. I walked out the door. And... Uh, I walked out. Did a me- the message got the through there? I just waited and got a lot of money because I thought they still might be hiding down the dark or something. Anyway, well, they wouldn't have done anything, that, you know, because yeah. they would have thought well, I've already got in, yeah. you know. So anyway, I finally got away. And then um, and then Ned came to me in a police talk. It was the day that uh, the uh, Bunny, not Bunny Johnson, Sugar Ray, Leonard Ford, uh, Marvis Marvin Hackman. Yeah, right. So he came to me and he said, mate, can I move up with you? I said, yeah, if you bring the 5,000 down, because I lost 5,000 on a fight with Roberto Duran, uh, fighting Thomas Hickman and Andrew got knocked out in the first round. Uh, so I lost it to him and I said, bring the five grand and I'll love a bet on Leonard and back to Hagrid because you love it. I said, I'll have a talk to you, that's all I'm going to do. I don't know what you're saying about that because I haven't been near him for months. Yep. By this time, Flannery disappeared. Uh, no, he, he got into hiding and they were uh, trying to kill George Freeman, yeah, right. who he worked for. Yep. But it was a mind we were tight. And so, but he wanted to kill him. He wanted to be the number one yep. man in the team. And yeah. 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 You've got to have a little bit more smarts than that. You yeah. Know, just be a killer. He so, seemed a big uh, note. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, he, he put him in his back. Uh, that's what he was good at. Mm. He didn't have any other abilities, his own robberies and all that. He was dark at them. Yeah. He, he was a, you know, so he chose to use his rat to kill them. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and paid, paid assassins, I was never, yeah. you know, I'd spit on them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Before, so. Like you said, in your, in your bag as well. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, like, like you've got to kill for the gang, and uh, if it had to happen, it was the last, mm. last resort. And, it had to happen. I know with the rules, I knew the rules. We lived by that life and yep. they were it. So anyway, I ended up, he ended up talking to me after the fight. I won the 5,000, got me 5,000 back. Let him beat him and then uh, he sat down and he, he said, mate, you were right all the time. He said, them blokes. I said, I told you they were going to turn on you. I'll yeah. turn on you. Don't worry about that. You know, if I was going to go that day, he, he, he said, I didn't know you were going to. I said, yes, you he knew I was fucking young, mate. Yeah. Right? The money disappeared. I said, number one, I want that back. Right? Yeah. So I put the money back. And then I said, uh, 
Then, that's the plan. And he said, we'll get rid of him. I said, oh, good as hell. Now, in between here and there, he tried to shoot the police off the Michael Drury. Yep. Right? He shot him through the window. Well, that's what everyone says. Yeah. Right? The real bloke who shot him was Laurie Prendergast, who has since went missing with him. He was his offside from Melbourne. Yeah, sure. He was the shooter. Chris Flynn replaced himself somewhere that night to carry his ass. Yeah, right. Now, all the stories then came out. Even Michael Drury said to himself, um, you know, oh, we turned up, Rogers and Drake, we were in a police car, and, you know, they come up with all those scenarios. Look, no one knows the truth unless you live the life. Yeah. I lived on the inside. I yeah. the truth. Yeah, right. He shot him through the window. The bloke didn't die, so they needed a scapegoat. Ah, uh, yeah. So... Because he's still right, talking right, about right, it today. He right, approached the blood. Yeah. And uh, over a, a drug deal and gone. He approached that Michael Drury and said, there's 30,000 from the bloke who got Prince Williams in Melbourne. And he said, he said, and that's for you. He said, if you can pull up on them. Yeah. He said, I can't, it's gone too far. I can't pull up on the blue. And he said, so anyway, you approached him a few times, he wouldn't play. So the next one of the stupid plan was to get rid of him. Now, I was part of this conversation, not with Rogerson, but with uh, uh, Ned Smith. Yep. At the back of his house in Tempe. And I was talking about it. And I said, if you do that, you're going to bring a fucking house of cars down tumbling, buddy. Heat, but yeah. We're going to have heat coming out of our ass. And we just, no, nah, he said, everyone's on side. I said, oh, mate, you fuck. Like, Roger was just about to go anyway. He was, yeah. on, he was on his way out. Yeah. And uh, next minute, um, the... Uh, <clears throat> When, when I said that to him, I said, well, listen, you can leave me out of it. Yeah. I don't want any part of shooting any covers. That's part of the green light, mate. Yeah. Right? The green light is we don't hurt the police. Yep. We don't shoot people in public. Yep. Unless it's a bad resort, you know, and there's no other place to get the person. We don't take our fights into the public arena like they do today. Yeah. Like shooting up houses or, you know, we don't, never do shit things like that. Yeah. So, you know. If, if we had to do something, then we were playing against another gang, so that's who we'd get. We wouldn't go and shoot their mother or, yeah. you know, or things like that, or cousins or friends or, you know. There were still some rules. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, how home is your castle? Yeah. So they were the rules. So I ended up falling for this trap. And I'm filthy and I'm not. I was sort of, you know, I was on the verge of knowing it was, there, was, there was something smelly about it. I said, that I'll play it out. Yeah. So anyway, I was supposed to, we were supposed to take a gun that day. He said, look, they're in a hiding and they were shooting with George Freeman. He said, we'll go and give them some money and a gun. We'll leave them for a week. We'll take them back some money the next following week, he said, because then you'll know where they are. And he said, then we can fucking finish them off there. Yeah. I said, all right, good. And I thought to myself, yeah, you'll be going with them. Yeah. Right? So that's what, that was my mindset. Oh, I had enough of them. Right? So, too much treachery. Yeah, that's so right. I said, I've had enough of it, mate. So, so, on the day in question, we met at the Bullwater Hotel in uh, uh, Bullwater Road, Old Man, with the Lord of Wilkesby Hotel. It was a Saturday, it was around lunchtime. Now, we're supposed to meet him up there at one o'clock at King Arthur's Court in, in the cross just before the Cape of Goals. Yep. On the team side there. Anyway, I. When I got there, he said, um, mate, any chance you can just run that up? He said, the gun and that. And I said, what about the money? And he said, oh, I said, well, only one word to just run up. I thought you were coming. He said, he said, oh, Roger just run. He said, he needs to see me over something. And I said, oh, I said, give us the gun. I said, what about the money? He said, oh, fuck, I don't know about it. Well, uh, when I was driving on, I was thinking, that would be fucking It's weird. a bit weird, yeah, straight. Anyway, within 200 yards, bang, I picked up this felt and held me. So it followed me, followed me. Make a long story short, but the, the, I had a gun on in the car. They had to pull up beside me in the traffic going up the cross, William Street or Saturday Yeah. But in the part of the city, like, where they tried to get me in there, there was no one. Yeah, right. So all the shots shot at midday in the yep. city, Pitt Street and all that, George Street. Castle Ray, they're all shut. So I drive up to the hotel, get to the hotel. 
naturally the bloke doesn't turn up. I think it might have been three o'clock, I have to see. Not one. Anyway, as I got there, there was a big bay window right on the corner of the pub, if you've had the known. I sat there and I, I looked across the road where the old fire station used to be on the corner. If you go up to the top and turn right and right again, you can come down the ramp again and be on William Street again. Yep. On the opposite side. I'm looking over here, I see the car paddle man pull in, and I see the detective car pull in beside him. And he got out of the car, he walked out with his show, giving him a rest. Now, I think I'm right by saying it was Detective John Anderson, he's dead now, he died of cancer. And uh, I know it was him who went to the house for flavour and they worked out a plan, and even Rogerson says it on his DVD that he sent him there. To go and see Flannery to sort out the gang walls. Yeah. Uh, now for, so if he wasn't a policeman, yep. he'd go a fucking police informer, then what was he going there? Uh, he had set me up, I was the scapegoat. Fuck it out. If he was dead, if, if I'm dead, yep. then I jerry that the gun I got is probably the gun that shot Drew. <laughs> I, I don't put this together till later. Yeah. But I got me in there in the car and I've got my own gun as well. So I've got both of them between my legs. I go up at the top, turn right, turn right again. The cop's car takes off in front. Go down, turn right up the New Zealand Hotel. I pass the cathedral. Yeah. Around the St James Station where David James is. Yeah. And I start to head straight down King Street. Right? Go to the yeah, traffic I know where you are. The yeah. car parked over on the left hand side, his wheels turned out. Ah. He's got a here. Yeah. The panel man comes up, you know, see daylight. So I see the panel man doors of the old, like the old sand man back. Yeah, yeah. So I see the, the, uh, the double doors open, I can see the cracking. Yeah. I can see daylight through my room. I had a Jaguar at the time, the 350 Chef motor. Yeah, nice. And uh, it was all sitting up. And I was yeah. just turn it out box and, and everything. Yeah. Now, as I come through the lights on Gary, I went, he's going to fucking lock me. So I just went, whoosh up with the right hand side. Long the fucking foot, but I we killed one of them PMG blokes. <laughs> on the side of that, yeah. They, they, they used them. to sit there, yeah. And uh, then I reversed backwards and flew backwards, and there's Castle Ray Street, so it's one way that buses are coming this way. Yeah. And I fucking turn and face the other way and jump out of the car. Yeah. Right? They jump out, they ballot up, now the cop is there, not coming. Yeah, yeah. So the other cop is yeah. off. Yeah. So what was going to happen? I now know as I worked out, the copper would have taken off. Once they'd shot me, they were hoping he knew it had all gone wrong, so he took off to the outside. But if I was shot down, he would have just taken off. Yeah. Come around the street. Remember, these are the days of no cameras. Yeah, this is the. So back he comes and he says, Guess who I just found the side of the road? Yeah. They get the gun, they take it back to ballistics, shows that it's killed three blokes in the underworld and uh, shot Michael Brewer. Right? Unbelievable. So that, that's the match up and bang, I'm gone and I'm doing life. Unbelievable. Uh, I'm either dead or yeah. they've solved the case and they're through the break. Rogerson, you know, they've got to be involved. They've, they've, they've got an hit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he was part of the plan to set down. You know what I mean? Unbelievable. That's how the treachery run me. So Unbel- at the end of the day, I got through the break. So but you jerried, you jerried again and you had the smarts. Uh, I mean, the poor bloke, it would have been like a scene out of a movie, mate, yeah. when, you were, when you were with a car yeah, and a so poor I bastard would have shit himself for that. I ended up pissing off up on a one-way street, went out to Laura Delson, sat out there, had a couple of beers, hit the guns downstairs, yeah. near the public in there, and just be old tunnels there that would be out end of the, yeah. the old uh, ships and the old days, you know, the convicts used to travel up and down. Yeah, and Jesus. So he hit the guns down there for a while, then I, I took them back off the black. And then I, I headed straight back. Well, when they seen me, yep. he shit himself. Oh, yeah. And, and he hardly could talk, you know. He was a giant of a man, as you know. And yeah. Six foot six and, you know, big man. And I said, someone just tried to open me and kidnapped me. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I said, I don't know if it's the coppers, but I think it's the coppers and the fucking crook. Yeah. Right? And you know all the fucking about it. Here's the fucking gun. I give it to him in the fucking bag. And my mom. I fucking passed it to me. I wiped the fucking thing down. Yep. And I said, I'll fucking catch you later. You're a fucking man. And he's, he's mine as a shoot he right there. He didn't say a word to me, mum. Yeah. Uh, he even called me the maggot. He would have wanted to punch me. Yeah. Punch, punch on with me and he'll not walk on, right? 
the and we got we punch on later on, but I go so I went and I came down the road, I got out of my car and I went into Bullwire Road and I sat in the tenement house. I waited for an hour and up they pulled. And I walked down the road together and I went, like, Yeah, you were what? Fuck it out. I went, you fucking swan. Yeah, so anyway, he, he went missing on the 9th of May, uh, Flannery, and uh, allegedly Brenna Gas goes missing sometime in August. Uh, from his house in Melbourne. Well, whether that was true or not, well, I don't know. Unbelievable, isn't it? You know, it's it's dog has a day and uh, yeah. they had theirs. But it's 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 a dog eat dog situation, oh, isn't it? Right. And, and I mean, back then you were old school, you yeah. know. And uh, wow, well, probably the good days in between. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then I. But your smarts uh, got you out of yeah. so many situations, you know. Oh, oh, right, shit. Mate, you know, Three times around your head, once you out. Yeah. You know, you, you've always got to think, 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 and. Yeah. And that's what I did. And common sense, what we were saying before, and common sense seems to be gone these days yeah. completely, but, but uh, unbelievable. I'm going to finish off. No, I'll, throw, right. I'll throw a couple of names at you if that's all right, yeah. um, and we'll wrap it up soon. Um, that was fantastic. No Thanks for that. Um, Abe Saffron. Uh, I didn't have much to do with Abe. Uh, he was virtually untouchable because uh, people were gangsters like at first and all that. Uh, yep. Yeah. They, they couldn't uh, interfere with his businesses. I mean, he yeah. owned probably every pub and yeah. uh, club in the cross. And, uh, you know, uh, there had been some interesting uh, conversation. Uh, you know, the, the, the Commissioner Allen and Hanson and uh, the Assistant Commissioner of Police and yeah. everyone, they all protected him. Yeah. You know, he was a smart businessman, he was an entrepreneur. Yep. He's no different now than what. Uh, Tell him where he is. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't call him a gangster at all. His brother, his brother was. Yeah. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, no, he's a smart little operator. Yeah. Uh, don't take me up. I feel if, if you have to do a couple of things along the way, well, good on him. Yeah. You know. He, they lock out laws. He closed a lot of businesses uh, up there at the cross, a lot of the clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. Every hand yeah. 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 better things. But, yeah, there was money, so yeah, there was a bit of a kind of with with Abe or whatever with the Luna Park thing, and yeah. I remember when Eda Nielsen disappeared years ago yeah. and all that sort of business. Well, and I know that that didn't hear it, and you know, like he, he ended up rolling on Abe Zaffron because mm. you know, and his son was just the same. Actually, I punched the crap out of his son one night up there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was one of them. Like he, he uh, threw uh, two women uh, with the old stadium, used to be the Sydney Stadium, uh, White Bay or whatever they call it. Yep. Uh, uh, he, he threw two women off those balconies, and uh, oh, he was far the pay the local uh, cop from the cross, and uh, they got through the break. Oh, got through the break on two murders, mate. I can't and then, um, you know, there's no doubt that Anderson and uh, the crew that he worked for, not. Not uh, Yep. No, I don't know that 100%, but I'm not stupid. I've been in the life all my life. Yeah. And, uh, but. Uh, she could have ended up. Did I, did I order it? Uh, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. You know, it's a little I know she was causing a bit of trouble with. Yeah, of course she was. Heritage yeah. and real estate. Well, and... She was pretty silly. Yeah. I walked herself in. I put the old Vita Hospital there. Yeah. And she walked herself in. Yeah. And I said, Yeah, right. So yeah. You don't go up there and he's an old. But anyway, you know, Jesus. Jesus. Um, a mate of yours, I know, Stan. Stan the man. Stan the man, Smith. Stan the man was probably one of the uh, most dangerous, most feared uh, gangsters of his day. Yeah. Uh, he was certainly uh, pretty clever. I mean, I know all the, the movies they show, Tough Nuts and all that, showing getting uh, baptised and they, they actually showed a baptism and, and it's true that he got baptised. Yeah. But uh, if anyone thinks that he still wouldn't run around doing crime, they yeah. you know, do their head ready. Their head ready. <laughs> you know, I ran with him from 1997 until 2010 until he died. Yeah. Uh, we weren't playing a tiddly game. So yeah. yeah. He, was a, he was a very smart operator. We stopped uh, popping people. We stopped, you know, he didn't need to, his son uh, died. At the moment, that's a terrible. I heard that, and, yeah. Uh, he, he, he virtually pulled himself into gear a lot after that. I know they've come up with a lot of stories that, you know, we killed uh, 
pushed a doll finally at George Freeman's house and you know, I like to come up with all the stories they like me. Yeah. But look, as a bloke, I found him to be uh, one of the funniest blokes I've known, uh, very clever, uh, mm. one of the smartest blokes I've known, and a pain in the ass. Right. I used to fight with him for months. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't talk to him for months on end. Yep. And uh, then I'd just go and see him and just and he'd just go like that. And yeah. Say, yeah. You know what I mean? So Let's get on with it. Move yeah, on. Yeah, that's, I mean. that's a good thing too, isn't it? I mean, people don't do that anymore. Just just get over it. Move on. Yeah. But I mean, you know, and then, you know, when, when he went, and we started stopping really knocking around the other and me and the other blokes, and now and then we catch up with each other, but it was never the same. Yeah. And, uh, you know, things have changed, and, and uh, the Crime Commission were run had other people running the city. Yeah. Who were just little scumbags. Uh, poli- you know what the main way was. Yeah. And uh, police dog. And uh, I'm still running to this day. It's a low But But um, Stan, uh, one of the best blokes I've met. And. Uh, you could, you could pretty much trust him 99.9%. Yeah. You know, the other time he was a little bit like Coop in the background. Yeah, yeah. I, I never <laughs> dropped me out with him. Yeah. But, but I always felt safe in this company. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he yeah, sounds so, like he's a smart operator. Yeah, yeah. very, very, very smart. <laughs> Um, I'll, look, I'll finish off with a couple more, which was uh, George George Foreman, uh, Freeman, sorry, for George Freeman. I George when I was a young bloke. Uh, uh, I, I actually collected for him once, uh, and uh, I couldn't get money off the bloke, and it comes through another bloke, and I said, I'll take the job. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't running with anyone then. I was a bit of a freelance. And, uh, he had a name, I didn't he? He had a bit of a name, yeah. And I, uh, I hunted around for this bloke for a long time. Anyway, I finally found him at uh, uh, the Soviet area. Yep. I'm not pretty nice but no anyway, worries. I found him and um, I see him bed and over the phone this day and I actually seen someone turn up there and pay him as well, give him some money. So he's betting SP with other people as well, so he's avoiding George, paying George. Yep. And he was still on him, so... It was a bit of a big fat slug. So I followed him home and uh, went to his place. And the following Saturday, I went to the same place. And just before the, uh, uh, the, he was coming home, I knew he was late. And I took off and uh, went and parked, got through the bar for a winter of his house and got into his uh, water rope. Yep. And uh, I waited for quite a while. He left the lounge room, followed him, went to bed, started snoring his head off. I pulled out a plastic uh, water pistol full with petrol. Ah. I squirted it all over his face and all over the bed. Yeah. And he woke up in the fright. Yeah. And in this hand, I had Noel Ronson, Bunsen burner. Yeah, right. And cigarette oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I looked her up and I said, Where's the fucking money, my Yeah. He said, Where, well, mate? Yeah. yeah. And I went to the cupboard and made him get out on his hands and knees. Opened up the safe and there was more there than the ODM, but I took the lot. Took the lot, yeah. Interest, yeah. <laughs> Went back and, give it the, and he paid me handsomely. Yeah. And, uh, and I never saw him for years and years and years until one day I stood over a, a bookie uh, down at uh, Wentworth Park and he came and saw me and leave and he said, mate, can you just do me a favour and leave? Leave that bloke alone, he's my man. Oh, right. So uh, I said, all right, so I dropped off him, you know. Yeah. But uh, I didn't, and I never seen him again until one night he was with Flannery and Prendergast. Yeah. Uh, just before they tried to kill him. Jeez. At the uh, top of the Texas Tavern in the air group. Yeah. The air group, yeah. the pen and uh, Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, knew the Texas Tavern. Yeah, yeah. Spent many a long night up there. Yeah. And, up there, some Commonwealth police up there. Well, I've seen them all. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, Commonwealth police, federal police. Uh, they followed us all day and they were pissed as fast. They couldn't keep up with us. Yeah. And I got up and started singing my way uh, with a um, uh, uh, bloke called King, who was the uh, uh, piano player up there. And uh, oh, he called me up on stage. I got up with him and uh, started singing this cop. come out and said, Yes, so I can give someone else a go. Uh, so I screwed back up the mic and I said, excuse me, audience, I said, we've got an in the cycle and the clap 
Yeah, nice. Back up off around and left hook him. Yeah. And back up was on. Moving this bloke through text when I said last time, we got punched on them and bashed him. Yeah. And then another bloke took off out the door and left us posted. So, <laughs> uh, so they didn't want nothing to do with it. I can't blame them, I guess. But uh, anyway, we punched the crap out of it. It cost us about 15000 the next day to the head boss in the town. <laughs> we fools. And, um, you know, that's what happened. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they were great, uh, who else? mate. I'll I'll just lay I'll lay well, Lenny McPherson. Oh, I've got to ask you about Len. I liked old Len. Look, they've called him all sorts of names, and I know that the main bloke of every gang has got to help the police in some way. Either yeah. they're the bagman, or they, or the police pretend they're giving them information and really getting it off someone else. And sometimes they're helping. Yeah. Uh, so. You know, I can't really honestly say whether he did or whether he didn't, but he certainly scratched their backs and they scratched his. And they go, he had a tough, uh, tough reputation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was He's a big man. Like, yeah. And just before he died, grab a food from these, like, by the hand, he was working in the kitchen at Cessnock Dale, the bloke wanted some more food. Yeah. He pulled his hand through the, grabbed his hand and stabbed him with a fork. The light down in front of the bird and they said, get him out of trouble. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, we had a massive heart attack. I was there when he dropped it. Because it was his biggest fear. I remember him saying, yeah, I don't want to die in jail. Well, it was that afternoon. I was walking around with another bloke called Les Mara, who was doing, doing uh, only six months at the time for uh, money laundering. Or, uh, he had 500000 in the boot of his car. He used to play for Belmont in Australia. Trippy black, that. We made them on. And uh, they went and uh, I remember walking around the fence and he was wobbling everywhere. Lenny, and I said, uh, what's wrong, mate? He said, I'm just thinking about that Louis Bayer up the cross, you know. He said, he's given me up in the Royal Commission. He's I said, mate, he's got to get into a court of law. He's got, he's got uh, you know, a, a Royal Commission's not the court of law. Yeah. To get into the court of law, then, then he's got to get up and give evidence. He's got to have collaboration. Don't yeah. Forget it, mate. Yeah. But don't worry about him. He's just a piece of shit and a mark yeah. and a dog, so don't worry about it. So, and he disappeared, and so, didn't he? Uh, yeah. As I say, he dropped dead a few weeks later. He's um, uh, made an aorta burst yeah, he shit. before he hit the ground. But um, I, I like winning. Yeah. I, uh, I got on terrific with uh, Lady McPherson. And um, uh, the only other time I've seen him, I've seen him at uh, Louis Bayer's house during the game wars. Yeah. And uh, we went and had a talk about uh, a bloke called Tough Tom Donovan, who was... Um, you know, I'm glad you're talking against, about him. But he wasn't against him, mate. He, he tried to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, you know, he won to be. There's no doubt about that. And he could probably, he was very good with his feet. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, but, uh, you know. Like, he was Irish, Irish, yeah, Irish background, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and, uh, you know, look, I don't, I don't like bagging. He said a couple of stupid things about me uh, in a book called uh, Australia's Toughest prisons or something, and he said that I run run me one day like a little puppy or something, some stupid thing over a fight that I started with him. Yeah. Well, he really started himself, he bagged it, and he got knocked out. Yeah. And, uh, well, he didn't get knocked out, he got dashed. Yeah. And uh, that's from me. And uh, anyway, he blew up over that. Well, I mean, he's been in my company five times prior to that, never said boo to me. Yeah. So, and he knew what I'd said prior to that. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, he was in Ireland at the time, or Green Island or somewhere in Ireland, and uh, and they called, and uh, this bloke, Philip, who wrote the book, rang him and got in touch with him, and, and he said something silly. A uh, mate of mine rang him up and said, mate, what did you say that for? Yeah. He said, oh, I just, you know, I said the wrong word. So anyway, that's past and gone, mate. Yeah. It's gone out my head too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we're still around. Uh, God bless him. And, uh, good luck for him. But you know, he tried to jump on with Barry McCann and blokes like that. But they weren't against us, mate. They paid organised crime to, to run their illegal casinos. Yeah. You know, yeah. So they weren't organised crime. They, they they just wanted to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. By then, all of that stuff that money had went out of, went out of flavour. Yeah. Legal gambling, prostitution became legal. Yeah. Uh, everything went. It was all you know, old so school stuff and anything. Money just had a couple of crocs. Places up the cross, yeah, and uh, I think maybe some still own them. I don't know, yeah, but uh, and um, but uh, you know, they're lovely bikes, they don't get into trouble with over on the rim, yeah. Uh, but I, I really like him, I like his family, they're very close to me, and I uh, 
No, I have a long time for him. Yeah. Regardless of bullshit about him. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, the, you know, there was he, he was he was a he was an old school, you know, and he's and he was. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, you, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't made it like yourself. You wouldn't piddle on his boots, you know. So he was up front. He couldn't Mate, it's fantastic. And they ruled there for many many years strong. Yeah. Until that time, and then we took the reins, and then and then I broke away from there and joined another gang, and then. Ended up running with Stan the Man Smith, and uh, it was the last of their, their Mark Beacons, really. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he died, and then uh, just after that, a friend of his, Jimmy Goodwin, died, and uh, he was really the last of Mark Beacons of the, the strong side of that, too. Yeah, oh, definitely. Uh, Mate, it's. Really like, oh, I've, I've got I've got another half a dozen names, but what I'm going to leave it till next time. Um, I'll wrap it up. Before I wrap it up, absolutely, I'm going to clean over here, folks. This is Mr. Henry's book. You've got to get it. It's just come out recently, hasn't it, sir? Yeah, well, what it is, it's actually uh, my whole book was called A Treacherous Life, and I had a great demand for it. So that's that's the same book with added chapters to it. Yep. And uh, it's called The Last Man Standing because that's exactly what I am out of that gangster crew. After the 90s, then new crews to a and I was, I was out of the... Yeah, that's a picture as far as green lights went. So yeah, you know, so, uh, mate, I, ha- I, I have, I've still got a copy of Treacherous yeah, Life. And you can get uh, that on. Uh, all you could do is look up the website. That's atreacherouslife.com, and uh, just order it online there, mate. And I'll sign it. Just put in your name, your address, and uh, yep. I'll send them back, and we'll sign them another bit. Please do, swingers. Um, atreacherouslife.com. Yep, yeah, please do. Order it. Um, fantastic read. Uh, it's a great book and a great man of, of real stories of, of Sydney. Um, and he lived it. You know, he lived it. And we can't thank you enough for coming in today because, we, like I said, we're just a small, we're not professional, if you can't tell. But yeah. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> Thanks very much. And, uh, you know, you've just done us a huge favour. And I, I, I really respect uh, respect you, and I'm very grateful for, for the opportunity. Um, thank you, sir. And we would love to have you on again for maybe do part three and four yeah, later in the year. Yeah, and uh, definitely if, if, if you're on. Mate, it would be terrific. And, look, we'll have a bar then, and it will be all finished. So we're sort of oh, – the, the background is my industrial look, which is my garage door. So <laughs> – but uh, no, it'll be finished by then. Thank you very much uh, for for the two part series we've done uh, on the underworld of a, of a, of a true stand up guy. It's always kept his word, and we're very grateful, Mr. Graham Henry. Thank you very much, and we'll we'll see you soon, sir. And we're very grateful. Take care, everyone. I always pop in. Fuck you, Polly's, and because uh, <laughs> I, I can't stand them. And uh, we'll see you all uh, very soon.